Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokish here at the Unconvention in Omaha, Nebraska with Carla Howell, and she is someone who I got to meet in 2016 at the Libertarian National Convention for the Who's Driving Seminar Workshop, and it was, just, it was such a cool messaging practice exercise, highly recommended, and I'm really glad that there are people like her who are helping build up our candidates, build up our activists within the party, and making them more effective at spreading this message. But she's also someone who's been involved with this party for a long time, since 1996, helping out with the Harry Brown campaign, and then being involved with the party. Too many things to list on her resume. She doesn't want me to say that she made it all the way up to executive director, but was also political director of the LNC and has been just a longtime booster of this cause. So, Carla, we're here at the unconvention in Omaha. A lot of, uh, I want to be humble, uh, let's say uh, great personalities of the movement gathered here. What does it feel like after, you know, uh, the, the time that you spent in the party? Seeing a community like this, what do you think's changed and evolved since you've been involved with the party? Well, I think what's really interesting me that I notice at this event uh, is that having been active for now 22 years, very active, the demographics are notably shifting. And I'm seeing more mixed gender. It used to be 90% male. I'm seeing a lot more women. I'm seeing a lot more young folks, but a mix of ages. And a lot of well-dressed and sharp and very presentable people, people who seem to have better communication skills, better um, presentation skills. So that's, I think, a, a sign that we're really entering into the mainstream here. Or we're losing our credibility as the misfits and punks and rebels of the political scene. But no, I appreciate but what you're we saying. We still have those, and, and they're still welcome. Well, we can be and both. You can be that and be more professional and be more effective, right? I mean, there's there's times when that sort of wacky, I mean, Donald Trump got elected, you know? <laughs> there's times rather unusual personalities can be successful, but... Uh, at the same time, there are some tried and true principles of what reaches most voters and gets through to people the way we want to get through to them. So that's why people dress well when they campaign and, you know, try to put on a credible presentation. So of all the things that you've done in the LP at this point, your focus is still messaging and encouraging other people to, to, yeah. to consider uh, the, the core concept of who's driving, which is w when you're in an interview, you take charge. And I learned this going back uh, when I was being coached by lefties with Iraq Veterans Against the War, and they said, no, you don't answer the question you are asked, you answer the question you wish you were asked. And that's, that's yeah. a brief summation of that. But for, for anybody in communication, what do you think the, the who's driving lesson would be, especially for anybody who's considering running for office or any activist who might be watching? It's, it's not just that you take control, you do have to take control, but specifically the way you, the reason you take control is to put liberty in the driving se driver's seat. It's not really to put yourself in the driver's seat, though you do need to be driving. It's to put liberty driving so that we are advancing a specific libertarian agenda. This is where we need to demonstrate we are serious. This is not a pipe dream. I mean, for a long time, libertarians were... It was so unimaginable that we could actually end the war on drugs or actually see signs of freedom, you know, that people didn't really take seriously the idea that we were going to achieve it. But I think we're entering a time now where this is achievable. It's going to be achievable largely because we say so, because that's how all human events occur. Someone says, we're going to have communism or we're going to have freedom, and that's how it happens. They declare it, they say they're going to do it, and they do it, learn to do it persuasively. So the message that I think we need to get is that we can do this and that small government is absolutely possible. We must take down big government. It's gone on way too long. It's done way too much damage. We can do it. We must do it. We must do it. Well, I would argue that it's inevitable. And it's, it's great to hear that, that after all your time that you're not discouraged because you see a lot of people burn out. But on that, I'm, I want to do one, I want to ask you one hard question, kind of put you on the spot, given, given, given your experience and how, how much wisdom you bring to this conversation. Like you say, it's unimaginable that we could end the drug war. And I, I like to say right now, we are at the end of the beginning of the end of the war on drugs you know like we are seeing it you can you can almost count the election well, cycles at this we're point well into the end of yeah. it of course there's much more work to do but we are engaged we have legalized marijuana in how many states now they're just popping up all over the you place. can't even count i like i'm traveling the country and i have to pull up a map and be like okay i have to worry about it here i have to worry about it here i don't have to worry about it there and a whole lot of states 
even if only medical marijuana is legalized, you can buy it. It's like decrim. It's very easy. It's convenient. It's safe. You can legally buy it. I don't know how, but I'm told you can legally buy pot in D.C. And this is becoming soon a third of the country, approaching half quickly. Sadly, the motivation is often because they're going, as they did recently in New York, Oh, there's some money for us in this. <laughs> Let's let them have their freedom for some money. Yeah. We can make more money taxing this than locking people yeah. in jail, or at least the, the, winni the making money through the taxing people are winning over the people making money through locking people up because it's more politically viable. But I, and when it's I more money, too. It's a lot of money. I haven't even gotten to the hard part of the question yet. Okay. So you see that happening, and now it's Chuck Schumer, Senator frickin' Schumer, the Democrat, the, the, like one of the most vile statists, and, and, and I mean, just a supporter of, of so many you know, aggressive, violent government policies, and he's the one putting up the national legislation to legalize marijuana. And you go, how the heck is this guy getting credit? Well, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Give him oh, credit. Absolutely. With well, Donald Trump getting credit for Korea. So, but hold on, I, I know, well, I'm not, I'm not trying to get petty on this, don't get me wrong. The, the hard part of the question here is, are we going to achieve a libertarian society by dragging the Republicans and Democrats along issue by issue and winning issue by issue? Or is there going to be uh, a tipping point where the LP comes into its own and says, you know, we're just we're, we're ready to, to move past the status paradigm? I don't know, and I don't think it matters. Either and both are possible. It could be a combination of the I mean, the socialists did it by bringing down, by having both the Democrat and Republican parties essentially embrace their agenda. And they had two congressmen elected, and I don't even remember their names now, but people generally don't even know who they were. So if you're okay with the idea of I'm going to work my butt off, I'm going to be anonymous, no one's really going to remember me even if I'm a candidate or something, but we're going to turn around someday and see that there is liberty in this country. For me, that's the prize I want. And so that may well be the way we make change. A lot of the change makers throughout history were not the most famous ones. Right? I doubt Abe Lincoln was the most honorable advocate for ending slavery that ever existed. A lot oh, of people look, look at the racist quotes by Lincoln. He was not an abolition. I mean, it is it is terrible. Like the there's been ton there were tons of um, abolitionists who worked their butts off for decades to bring that freedom about. And, and then Lincoln got the credit. And then Lincoln is the great emancipator. So you know what? The slaves are free, and that's great. And that's. We want to correct history as much as we can. We should, but the best thing is these people are no longer slaves, and that's a big, big deal and a big, big win for us. That's really beautiful. To me, that really speaks to what I've sort of learned the hard way, starting as an angry activist, you know, getting to where I am now, much more centered, where you just realize that, that you enjoy the process. And she says work really hard. I'm, I, I kind of reject that. I, I think all we do is play. I think everything. I think I. You know. I fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> see, see, she's. Better. <laughs> she, he's right. I, I stand corrected. But even that. But it, it is. It is. It is effort. It is deliberate, conscientious, okay. long-term effort. Hey, work. Some of us actually think work is fun. I mean, I may not look <laughs> like I'm having fun when I'm working, but I'm driven by it. We are. I love it, and a lot of us kind of love it, and and some of us are better at being playful at the same time, and some of us. Sometimes aren't. <laughs> well, yeah, you have to be. That's, I mean, we at least better be entertaining and engaging, right? I, I think what it, what's, what's so beautiful that is that it's, you know that you're enjoying what you're doing in the moment and that we are on the right side of history. So, Carl, thank you for being a part of it and everything you do for the cause. Aww. Aww. So, do you, have, do you have any websites you want to plug other than LP.org? Um, in a few months, Center for Small Government dot com. Give it till the end of the year. Actually, it's not going to be launched in the very near future, but probably by the end of the year. So. Awesome! Thanks so much, Carla. Aww. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However. The next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. 
Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.